Anyway, today we're going to be talking about the MSI PS321QR, uh, which is going to be my new main monitor for the future. It has a lot of pluses, really significant pluses and significant minuses. Um, uh, so as I usually do for displays, I'm going to be grading it on build quality, performance, features, and value slash wow factor. One other thing I want to say is that if you have any questions about any of the products, I would love to answer questions um, if, whenever I get a chance to do so. <laughs> I do have like work to do, but yeah, if I can answer your questions, I'd like to do that. All right, so uh, for build, uh, the monitor has um, some interesting qualities, um, mostly doing the a setup process or putting it together part. Um, one of the things that's a little bit unusual about it is it has, it's like three different parts. So there's the base, there's the panel, and the stand. Um, usually when I've put together the panel with the stand before, you can kind of just like snap it into place and it's, it's ready. Um, this one, um, I tried to do that and it just was not doing that. And it comes with some screws which they um, label it for visa mounting. But um, the way it was attaching to the, the base, I mean the panel was attaching to the stand, I wasn't feeling like it was secure. So I went ahead and used the screws. Um, and that made me feel like it was a lot more secure. But I couldn't put on the little plastic panel on the back of it that's supposed to make it look aesthetically complete once you put the screws on. Once you do set it up though, it's stable, there's no issue, so it can do a lot of different things. I'm just not a huge fan of like all the different components that are involved with it and it doesn't seem like a particularly stable or sturdy. Um, the monitor is around $600, so it's kind of like, I kind of like expected a little bit better construction. Um, so for build, I'm gonna give it a three out of four. Um, one thing I really do like about it is it comes with a monitor hood, which I've never had for a monitor before, so I really like that. Um, it really does kind of help you like focus on the monitor. Um, it goes on top of the monitor, and I imagine it would be pretty hard to get one that's specifically for each individual monitor out there, so for it to have one that comes in the box with it and that fits on it magnetically, it kind of magnetically snaps on. It's pretty cool. It does make the contrast look nicer. Um, as far as the actual design and aesthetic of the monitor itself, um, it's not gamery, nor is it like boring. It's like somewhere in between. It does have these LED lights on the back of it that can you, that turn on, you can turn it on or off. Um, I don't really notice it too much, but it does give it like a little accent if you want something like that. Um, but the front of it is pretty straightforward, not, you know, it looks like a, just a regular monitor. Um, so, um, just in review, um, the quality, some of the qualities for this monitor, it is a 32 inch uh, quad HD uh, monitor that can go up to 144 hertz and it does um, Adobe RGB color, so it's really color accurate and it is um, an IPS display. So for overall for build, build um, lots of different components, doesn't feel completely well put together. Um, but as far as the design, it looks it looks fine, well nicely balanced, and a major plus for it, including a monitor hood, which I've never experienced before, and I'm sure a lot of people who get one would like it. So I get the build a three out of four. For performance, um, one thing that's very important about this monitor, when I first took it out of the box, um, I've had I've had other quad HD monitors before. When I first took it out, um, I thought the text was kind of fuzzy and everything looked kind of blurry and I said, maybe you have something wrong with this monitor. But one of the most important things is to remember, this is a 144 hertz monitor. So if you don't activate that, it will not look like what it can look like or what it's supposed to look like. Once I went into Windows and I went into the settings and I changed the hertz to 144 hertz, it looked a lot better. The text was clear, sharp the way it's supposed to look. Um, the color accuracy is great. I love the color on it. You can tell it's the higher color space. Um, so this was really important to me. I always want to be able to see, um, I always want to be able to see the right colors. 
This does look very good and it looks close to that, so I know it's a good color. The monitor also includes a local dimming feature. Um, the local dimming on it is kind of more of a gimmick, to be honest. Um, when you turn it on, you will see a lot of vertical banding uh, across the top and bottom. You can definitely see the zone. There seems to be about maybe eight or so. Um, if you're watching a video on YouTube or you're just like consuming media, you might like it. It might enhance the picture quality. But um, as far as using it for like navigating the desktop um, for everyday usage, for the most part, I would not recommend having it on. It's not something you want to just use passively. Um, it's more of just like something you would experiment with. Just want to go over real quick too how you can turn or change the hertz on your display. It's very important if you have any type of monitor that's not 60 hertz, the default. Um, you gotta go to your settings. I'm gonna go to your settings, um, look in advanced display settings, and it should be in there. It would probably be at 60. Make sure you turn it all the way up to what it's supposed to be at maximum. Another thing I noticed about the monitor was it offered me the ability to display 2160p. Um, that was the first thing I did when I first got the monitor and I looked at it and I thought it was fuzzy and blurry. I went ahead and turned it up to um, 2160, which I thought was kind of strange for a quiet HD monitor, but it kind of does some kind of simulation of what it would look like and it looks a lot clearer. So you could either use that, the 2160 mode, in your settings and it looks sharp, or you can go ahead and change it to 144 hertz, its maximum refresh rate, and both ways it looks a lot sharper. Other aspects of the panel that's good, um, it's IPS display, so it has really good viewing angles. Um, you can trust no matter where you're shifting, you're always going to see the right colors. Um, it has less light glow, white glow than some IPS displays. That's when you look at it from the side and it, the blacks start to look really gray, even though it's an IPS display. Um, it doesn't do that as much as other IPSs I've seen, so that's another good thing in its favor. It's um, a semi-gloss coating, so it's not going to distract from the sharpness or anything like that, but it does do a good job of preventing reflection. Um, overall, for, for performance, I give it a 3 out of 4. Um, it looks great. It's not 4K. Some people really want 4K these days. 1440p is a really good resolution if you're interested in um, gaming or if you want to get something that's a little bit less. This monitor only costs like 600, so um, considering it has the really high color accuracy and the high refresh rate and the overall build quality is pretty cool, I think it's pretty much just where it's supposed to be for value. Another thing that um, I'm not too keen on um, for performance, it kind of it can look a little bit murky and black when you're watching videos, so that's one other thing to keep in mind. I'm not really sure what that's about. It has something to do with the image processing but um, it's something to keep in mind. The features are good, but it brings to the table it's things like exceptional color range, uh, well calibrated out of the box. It has the one display port, um, HDMI 2.0B. It has two of those, so that's pretty cool. It's not regular 2.0, it's 2.0B. Um, it has USB-C ports, which is a pretty good feature. Supports things like picture in picture, PDP. Um, one thing that one thing that it does lack, it doesn't have any built-in speakers, so you do need to have an audio solution. It does have 3.5 out. I have it hooked up to an external um, Bluetooth speaker type thing, um, which serves as my main audio source. But a lot of monitors these days do have some kind of built-in speaker solution. Uh, so I was a little disappointed with that, but um, like I said, I bought this for the picture quality and the size and the resolution. Um, so I give the uh, features a 3 out of 4 as well. So mostly because it's not 4K and because it doesn't have any built-in speakers. Finally, we have value slash wow factor. Um, when you're using the panel, you will notice that it has a high refresh rate um, when you're just moving a mouse around. If you're gaming, um, it's pretty cool. Um, the color accuracy is great. The Adobe RGB color space is something that, the main reason why I wanted this monitor, I wanted something that was 32 inches 
um, with the higher color space that wasn't super expensive. And this meets all of that criteria. Uh, like I said, it's around $600. So it does do a good job for those things. Uh, but it's probably not really an exceptional value because it's all the things that I was looking for. Um, but it might not be everything to everyone. So it says monitor for a specific type of user, I would say. So I'm going to give the value slash wow factor a 3 out of 4. If you know what you're getting for it and you know how to take advantage of the higher refresh rate, you can really love the monitor, which I do. I love the color accuracy. I love what it can do. Um, but other people might say, I want a 4K monitor or I want an even higher refresh rate monitor or something with more style to it or maybe something that's more cutting edge like the Alienware QD OLED monitor that just came out. But I can keep in mind that this is $600. It looks really good, really good color accuracy, IPS display. It comes with a monitor hood, which I think is really cool. Um, so for this monitor, um, it gets three out of four across the board. Um, it could be a little bit more refined in the build. Like I don't understand why it's three different pieces. Um, the performance, we have to really make sure that you take advantage of the high refresh rate to make it look the way it can look. Um, the features, no built-in speaker, not 4K, but if that's what you were looking for, that's fine. Um, overall, I would say it's perfect for the right person. Um, if you have any questions about the monitor, anything I can have time I can answer, I would love to do that. And thanks for watching.